Glory to God. Things are happening, you know. We're getting ready to enter. Listen, we are close to the Red Sea moment. Very close. There are arrests going on. There's dismantlement going on. We are going to be entering a new quantum currency system. And all the corruptive corporations and all their assets will be dismantled as we enter this new arena. Everything will be reset because the enemy's already lost. They're fighting for their lives and they can't win. Hallelujah. You know, we're in a time of jubilee. Things will be restored in multiple ways. Multiple ways. You know, what we have to do is our responsibility is to hold on, to fight and stay in position, to keep connected to the throne room of God and maintain a prophetic insight, not relying on your own senses, not relying on your own understanding, not relying on your own abilities. It's a time to walk away from yourself like you never have walked away before. So that we can walk in the Spirit. See, because self can't walk in the Spirit. Carnal can't walk in the Spirit. It can have all the knowledge of the Spirit, but not walk in the Spirit. Does everybody get it? Oh, you can have knowledge of the Spirit, but not walk in the Spirit. That's a totally different thing. Because when you walk in the Spirit, demons fear you. When you're not walking in the Spirit, you fear them. There's a difference. Then there's a negative attitude. See, the Word says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, that we're more than the conquerors of God before me who can be against me. That means I can't lose. Does everybody get it? I can't lose. If I do, it's my fault, not God's fault. Because I didn't take heed. So we are in a moment of not only large and tremendous and glorious transitions, but of course, you know, when the enemy knows that he's losing, he's going to lie, cheat, and do whatever he can. See, the Federal Reserve has already been fenced off. They already lied. The White House has been fenced off. They've already lost. But the media won't let people know that. So you've got to have inside information. You've got to know people that have been there, it's there, seeing what's going on. You know, the word tells us that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. It's been laid up for long, for thousands of years. But we've never had access to it because my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen? Destroyed for lack of knowledge. But we are rising up now. People are awakening to the reality of what is really happening. Unfortunately, there had to be many deaths, many deceptions for people to awaken of what's really going on. You know, we talked about prophetic insight last week. And prophetic insight is going to be, you have to have prophetic insight to progress. Without prophetic insight, you'll be easily deceived. Would you turn to Malachi 3, verse 1? Behold, I send my messenger. Are you his messenger? Yes. Praise God. And he will prepare the way before the Lord. Are we preparing the way for the Lord? Yeah. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Are you his temple? Even the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? He is like a refiner's fire and like a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi, which are the priests, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. He's coming as a refiner. You know, that's what we call the burn, 
We're still in the burn. The burn is burning up everything, exposing everything. You cannot avoid the burn. You can try and do all kinds of things to avoid the burn, but you will not. The burn is exposing everything in everybody's life, all the idols, all the strongholds, all the false doctrine, all lies, all selfishness, everything that has to do with dismantling the old man is called the burn. Because the new man is what's going to be carrying everything into this new arena that we're entering. You'll see the difference. It'll be stronger and stronger those who are followers of the Lord and who do not follow the Lord. They say they follow the Lord, but they're really not followers of the Lord. They have works of God, but they're not really the works of God. Amen? There's a difference. This is where the separation of those who are the genetic connected and who are generic. All of this will be exposed. It's being exposed. Families are being separated. Families are being destroyed. Families are arguing over political. One serves darkness, one serves light. You know, the Bible says don't be unevenly yoked. Many people are unevenly yoked and having a hard time now. Many people that were blue turned red. They're having a hard time in their families. Well, God said that in the latter days, it said mother against mother-in-law, father, you know, and so forth, and brother against brother and sister. Why? Because it's going to cause division. Why? Because God is exposing. That's why. But he's exposing because of the burn. It's important that for the burn. Because when we get through the burn, prosperity, blessing, and favor. But he won't give it to the ones that are not. He only gives it to the ones that are pure undefiled. But if you're contaminated, you're going to miss it. You'll have to go to someone that has been purified, hello, and undefiled to get something. Because God ain't going to give it to them. That's where the harvest is going to come. Does everybody get it? Because those who are not purified, have not gone through the burn, will lack. No matter what they've done, no matter how much hard work they've done, they are going to lack. And now we have to go to the ones that are pure, undefiled. That's why God is going to set up storehouses. I keep praying every day for the Lord's community center where people can come, get fed, clothed, get sheltered, get directed, purchase food, all kinds of things. Why? Because they're going to be people that are going to be in need and that is going to to cause the greatest harvest. Because people don't seek unless they're in need. Amen? They first got to lose everything. I mean, I was out there. I didn't seek to find out what the heck the truth was until I lost everything. Amen? Oh, for the burn of the fire. We are in the burn to purify. Did you notice that God uses two Beautiful things. He uses his currency in this scripture. Silver and gold. <laughs> as a purification. As a refining. Because he's going to restore all silver and gold. Now think about this for a second. I really don't want to go here. But I'm going to. Once everything in the world is backed by God's money. Think about this for a second. So if the banks do not have enough gold or silver to support all their loans, you know what happens? All loans are canceled. This is the new law of the new era. So if you have a bank that you have a mortgage with that doesn't have the backing of gold or silver of that loan, that money they lent you, it's nullified. And this is going to be a global event. Every bank, that's why they're hustling big time. They're trying to get all the money and buy all gold and all kinds of stuff that they can to get into their banks because after a certain date, it's over with. If they don't have the money to back all their loans by gold and silver, it's all nullified. It's already happened in Russia. Many people's debts have been wiped out. 
because Russia's ruble is now backed by gold and silver. This will spread through the whole world. Does everybody get that? See, we're entering. And now, not only that, is all the corporations that are corrupt, their assets are already being removed into other storehouses. They're, they're, sent, they're, they're removed into digital storehouses called, uh, there's a currency, it's a, it's a digital currency. What's that? No. No. It's, it's uh, different. Crypto will come to an end also. All of that's coming to an end. But it'll be transferred over. Stellar. It'll all go into another place. In fact, I don't know if you've heard of lobster, but that's the storehouse of it. This is phenomenal. I mean, things that are happening, crypto is coming. Many, many people's stocks, or people have invested in all these corporations that are corrupt will lose it. That's why all of these CEOs and all of the stuff are trying to sell out. They're selling everything. They're buying as much gold as they can. They're selling their stocks or something. They know it's coming to an end. Quantum currency is what it's called. Everything will be turned into quantum currency. It will be a system that cannot be corrupted. We are coming to all of this. Again, we're going to see a big red see moment here shortly. We're watching things begin to happen, but within the next six weeks, there's going to be a global shift that is going to change the world. It's going to awaken the world like never before. So we want to be ready. And I believe that's what God's trying to do is get us ready. Amen? See, everything is going to go into what they call tangibility. If it's not backed by tangible, it ain't worth nothing. Amen? Notes, certain currencies, whatever. If it's not backed by gold or silver, it's not worth nothing. They can print all the money they want. It's not going to be worth anything. They're going to inflate all the, everything. I mean, look at the government's trying to do now because it's not really our government. It's the Antichrist regime. These are servants of darkness that have placed, gotten position. And you know, we let them in. We should have voted, of course, even if you tried to vote them out, you got cheated and lied. It wouldn't matter. <laughs> They'd have put them in somehow. But now people are standing up. They've got it all. They have the technology that can track every individual. They have the technology. I don't know if you've heard of the uh, 2,000 mules. But anyways, these are people that were carrying all the voting ballots that were illegal voting ballots, copy, counterfeit, 2,000 mules they got on video and digital. Caught them, taking pictures of it so they can get paid for each one that goes into the box. They got it all, man. Eventually, this is all going to come forth. You are going to watch this all eventually on TV as soon as some of the media gets taken down. You'll hear this all over the place. You can get popcorn and watch the whole movie. Think about this. I mean, this is what we're getting ready to. So listen, you can't give up. You got to keep fighting. You got to keep warfaring. No matter what. Because victory is ours in the name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 29. Verse 1. Let's speak. Give unto the Lord, O oh, you mighty ones. Who's the mighty ones? We are. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also skip like a calf, Lebanon and Syrian, like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth. 
the stripes, the strips, the forest, and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says, glory. The Lord sat enthroned at the flood. The Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. And the Lord will bless his people with peace. The voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord. Let me tell you, the voice of the Lord is heavy. Literally. It's heavy. Did you ever hear? It's called the burden of the Lord. What is the burden of the Lord? The burden is representation of truth because it's heavy. The Lord rebuked Jeremiah for saying that this is the burden of the Lord. He said, listen, the burden, my burden is not what you're considering. When it's the burden, it's my voice. It's the truth that I give because my word is heavy. Did you ever talk to somebody that talks to something deep? Man, it was heavy, you know? It's like if you took a brick and put it in water, it goes through everything. It goes right down to the bottom. The, vo the words of God are heavy. Their weight. Think about... Um, the scales of law. What does it have to do with weight? Amen? So, you know, it's so, when God's words are spoken, it busts through everything. Because it's weight. Literally weight. It's heavy. It's heavier than anything of all frequencies. It busts through everything. Hebrews 4.11. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and what? Powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, penetrating, going through, busting through, even to the division of the soul and the spirit and of joints and marrow and as a discerner of thoughts it intense of the heart. In other words, it's busting through every area because this word of God is weight. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him whom we must give account. Wow. Words of God are weight. They are burden. Isaiah 55. In verse 10 and 11. So if you threw a rock towards a window, it would usually go through it. Amen? But if you threw sand towards a window, it's just going to bounce off of it. Amen? So God's word is undestructible. But it is destructive to everything that it can touch. It can heal everything it can touch. Because it's heavy. Isaiah 55. 10. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it, make it what? Bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. See, if you believe in and accept it, when you release God's words, you know it's going to happen. The problem is, is people get discouraged because it doesn't happen the way they want it to right then and there. I've seen things happen 10 years later, sometimes 15. But then I've seen sometimes it's happened right away. Amen? But we got to allow God to have his time to fulfill it, not ours. He sent his word to accomplish and to prosper. In Hebrews 12, in verse 25,
that speak it, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, how much shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth? But now he is promised, saying, Yes, yet one more, once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heavenlies. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal. Here's the burn. The removal of those things that are being shaken is of things that are made that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. What? For the new transition. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. In other words, don't reject his words. Amen. Hebrews 1, in verse 1. Speak of God who at what? Various times and in various ways in time past spoke to the fathers by what? Prophets. And in these last days spoken to us by his son and now speaks to us through his spirit. Amen. Whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the worlds. worlds. And being the brightness of of his glory and express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had himself purged our sins sat down at the right hand of the majesty and high having become so much better than the angels and he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they various ways God will speak to us in various ways sometimes he speaks to us through trials tribulations Heck, he can speak to you through a vehicle in front of you. There's a bumper on somebody's sign. You know, a truck that can drive. You'd be asking God for something, and an answer would drive right through you. Hey, that's it. No, I mean, he can speak to you in any way he wants. But the whole thing is, is if we're sensitive, if we're paying attention. So many times we get distracted and we miss. Did you ever miss a place when you were driving? Hello? The phone rings or something? You know, be talking to Oh, man, I got to turn around. I, I do it all the time. Because <laughs> I got distracted. But, you know, when God speaks to us, and he's speaking to us all the time, so one way or another, he's hardly silent. He loves conversation. But we've got to give him the opportunity to speak. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Job 33. Job 33, verse 12. Let's speak it. Look in this, you are not righteous. I will answer you. For God is greater than man. Why do you contend with him? For he does not give an accounting of his own words. For God may speak in one way or in another. Yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon him, while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. See, many times gives you, God gives you instruction while you're sleeping. You just don't know it. In order to turn man from his what? Deed. And conceal pride from man. He keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Wow. Man is also chastened with pain on his bed and with strong pain in many of his bones so that his life abhors bread and his soul succulent food. His flesh wastes away from sight. His bones stick out, which once were not seen. Yes, his soul draws near the pit, and his life to the executioners. Wow. The voice of the Lord. 
Amen. He, what's he trying to do? He's trying to, number one, get our attention. That's what Job is talking about. He's like, man, I want to get your attention. You know, how many times, I, I haven't seen people in years, and next thing they call, and they're, they want prayer because they're sick. I don't know, you know. I said, so my, my first words are, oh, so God's got your attention. Yeah, he's got my attention. Okay, why? Because you've been backsliding, you know. Now, you're going to be healed no matter what. Whether you die or you stay here, you're going to be here. That's healing. <laughs> so don't worry about it. <laughs> you're going to get, I guarantee you, be 100% healed. Either here or go home, one or the other. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> But again, God gets their attention. What's he trying to do? Get our attention. He's trying to open our spiritual ears. The third thing he's trying to do is conceal instructions to us. The fourth thing he's trying to do is withdraw us from all of our own purposes. From our own purpose. So many times we got agendas all the time. See, you can't, you can't hold on to your agenda. You got to be willing for a holy shift. Amen. You got to be willing to drop your agenda. You get up every morning and you be praying or whatever, and you may have an agenda, and then you go to prayer and it's gone. There's something else going on. Or your day's going on, all of a sudden something interrupts your day. Well, that's, you know, you can either yield to it or reject it, but you must be able to discern whether that's from God or not. But if you're not taking time with God, you're not going to discern it. Amen? So he's trying to withdraw us from our own purposes. And he's trying to keep us from pride, the stumbling block of pride. And, of course, he's trying to save us from death. Hallelujah. Go to Joel chapter 2, verse 10. The earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. The sun and the moon grow dark. And the stars diminish their brightness. The Lord gives voice before his what? Army. And his camp is very great. For strong is the one who executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? The voice before his armies. Amen. And he gives strength to those who execute his word. If you want to execute his word, he gives you strength. Matthew eleven, twenty five. At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. That you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. All things, even so, Father, for so it is seem good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son. And the one to whom the Son reveals wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you who... Labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. There's the key. Learn from him. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is what? Easy and my what? Burden is light. Okay. My yoke is easy. easy. My burden is, first of all, known as truth because it's heavy, right? So my truth, he says, is what? Light. So my burden is light. In other words, my truth is light. He talks about, here it's two things, light of weight because it's not heavy on a person. Amen. But it gives sight. And so his burden is not only truth, but it also gives sight. Does everybody see this? 
Is everybody okay? Burden is truth and has weight, and light brings sight. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 13. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face and his mantle went out and stood in the entrance of a cave. And suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they seek to take my life. So he booked. He ran for his life. And he goes to this place. And he's waiting on the Lord. Now, prior to this, an angel of the Lord showed up to him. And, and woke him twice. And said, come on, you better eat. He said, we've got a long journey. So the angel of the Lord helped him and assisted him. Elijah took off for 40 days and 40 nights on the food that he ate. He came to this cave and he waited for God. And so while he's there waiting, the Lord's voice comes and he says, What are you doing here, dummy? <laughs> and he's got all of this humanistic reasoning why he's there. Well, this has happened, this has happened, and then they're trying to kill me. I'm the only one left. Was like, man, come on. <laughs> and so he, he goes out in front of the cave and wraps up, and then he finally begins to hear the Lord. Amen. In verse 15, and the Lord said to him, Go return on the way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazel as king of Syria. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nishmai as king over Israel, and Elijah, the son of Japheth, of Abba, Maloi, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. It's time for you to come home. <laughs> and it shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazel, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elijah will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there and found Elijah, the son of Japheth, who was plowing with twelve yoke and oxen before him. And he was with the twelve. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me go back and kiss my mother and my father, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back. Again, what have I done to you? So Elijah, Elisha, turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen, slaughtered them and boiled their flesh, using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. You know, so you got to think about this. Elijah learned a lesson. And then he brought that same lesson to Elisha. <laughs> Amen. What do you mean? What have I done to you? <laughs> He's like, I'm not doing this again. I've already been called a dummy once by the Lord. I'm not going to do this again, you know. So, but, and Elijah picked up on it. He said, you know what? You're right. What have I done to you? I mean, this is a calling from God. How dare I deny this call? How dare I reject this call? So he went back. Destroyed the oxen, uh, killed the oxen, destroyed the plows because they were wealthy. That's what his leaning and provision, everything was leaning on everything. His family was wealthy. And he left it all to follow Elijah and become his servant. That's what God asks us to do. That's the process that we're going through. And look at, what did he do? He burned it, right? See, he knew what the burn was. That burn has not stopped. <laughs> It still continues. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Hebrews 3. Yes. 
What's in your closet? <laughs> you know, I don't care what's in your wallet. What's in your closet? <laughs> And then who's in your mirror? That's the other question. Hallelujah. Hebrews 3, verse 7. It's speaking, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you will hear his voice and do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. In the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years, therefore I was angry with that generation. And I said, they always go astray in their heart. And they have not known my ways, so I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest any of there be any of you an evil heart from unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we do what? Stay consistent and disciplined. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end, while it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in rebellion. 2 Timothy 2, verse 11. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strife about words, no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. But be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In other words, interpret but shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. And their message will spread like cancer. Hymenus and Philistus are the, of the sort who have strayed concerning truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having the seal. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from what? Iniquity. Rightly dividing the word is interpreting God's voice and the words of God. Why? Because when you do that, you are accessing a realm called prophetic insight. Amen? Prophetic insight. Psalm 62, verse 5. My soul, wait silently for God alone. For my expectation is from Him. That's who our expectation is from. We have an expectation only on Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Surely men of low degree are vapor. Men of high degree are a lie. If they are weighed on the scales, in other words, truth, they are altogether lighter than vapor. Do not trust in oppression, nor vainly hope in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. God has spoken once. Twice I have heard this. That power belongs to God. Also to you, O Lord, belongs mercy. For you re render to each one according to his doings. That word work means doings. According to his doings. First Peter chapter 5. Everyone say, I'm the burden of the Lord. Mm. That means you are his weight of truth. You can penetrate through anything and everywhere. 
it doesn't mean you're a burden to God. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> I'm the Lord's burden. Somebody might look at you like, what? <laughs> I am the burden of the Lord. Just like we are the messengers of the Lord, we are his burden. Verse 5, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. That means respectful. And be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he's going to exalt you in due time. He'll promote you. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. So does he promote anxiousness. No. No. Be sober, which means alert. Be vigilant, which means consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him continuously, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, so you ain't alone. Amen? But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have been challenged a while, you'll be perfected, you'll be established, and you'll be strengthened. You'll be able to be settled, and you'll become a burden for the Lord. Amen. <laughs> and I'm going to close at Psalm 149. Let's speak it. Everybody there? Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the assembly of the saints. Are we the assembly of saints? Yes, we are the mighty ones. The burdens of the Lord. <laughs> let Israel, let true ministries rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name with the dance. Let them sing praises to him with a timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Let the saints be, what? Joyful in glory, in the glory realm. Let them sing aloud on their bed. Praise God, you ought to sing louder, you're out of bed now. Let the high praises of God be in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand. To do what? To execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples that are corrupt. To bind their kings with chains of corruption and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute on them the what? Written judgment of the word of God. This honor have all of his saints. So how's God, how's God going to avenge through us. Does everybody get it? He's going to avenge through your words, your warfare. He will avenge. He cannot move without your words. Does everybody get that? It's so vitally important that we understand these things. Why? Because we are the burden of the Lord. We are His burden. To execute vengeance, to execute judgment and righteousness through his word, because his word is heavy. His word is penetrating, it's powerful, it's destructive, and it's healing. And we must fight continuously. Look, at things wouldn't be changing if there were not people interceding in warfare. My life changed, well, many years ago, but my prayer life changed about four years ago. The Lord had me intercede in warfare, 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 every morning for about an hour and a half. Warfare, warfare. It hasn't stopped. He says, you warfare, we'll talk later. Oh, God, what do you want to talk about? Warfare. We'll talk later. I'll answer your questions. I know what you need. You warfare for me, and I'll provide for you. 
Does everybody get it? It's not a time to just go in and asking God for things. Get filled, dressed, and possessed. Then warfare. Because without your prayers of warfare, nothing can happen. Amen? Thank you, Lord. We are honored and blessed for your word today, Master. <laughs> and we don't mind being your burden. <laughs> So have mercy upon us and let your grace abound abundantly. Let us be carriers of your weight of truth that we may penetrate all things, expose all wickedness, and dismantle every operation of corruption in every country, nation, continent, island, globally, zip code, area code, dimension, and fold. Establishing your government and your kingdom, bringing boldness to your people, bringing holy, righteous anger to your people, to set the captives free so that your name will be glorified and the harvest will continue in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.